Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at Mesh Repair in SketchUp. So this is actually a question that's come up several times on our forum where people talk about uh, having a surface that has a hole in it and how you fix it. I use the term mesh to mean, uh, it's kind of a generic term, to mean any interconnected set of surfaces or as we call them in SketchUp, faces. Sometimes those holes show up. Uh, people think of mesh as being like, uh, like a fishing net, like all these, but a mesh is any interconnected pieces that create faces in 3D space. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at some things that cause holes in meshes and how to quickly repair them. Let's see, let's, let's go. All right, so I have this ceiling fan model right here. And in this, I have a couple of holes. So here, this one's real obvious, this fan blade, if I look in here, I can see, see that, you know, it's, it's 3D, it has depth and it's missing this front face. So the quickest, easiest way to fill in uh, a mesh or to check if you can quickly repair it is to grab a line and draw it along the edge. So if I click from here to here, it didn't close. Uh, the issue in this case, of course, is that I'm not in context. If I click right here, I can see that I'm actually drawing outside of this group or component that the blade is in. So this is fairly simple. Uh, if you wanna edit this geometry, click in till you get to the geometry. So here we are, we're in the geometry right now. Um, I can go to view, component edit, hide rest of model. That'll get rid of everything except for this blade right here. Um, oops, I got a little, little line here I can delete. And then I can just draw along any segment here and that will close up that face. Sometimes when this kind of thing happens, usually it's an editing error, accidentally got deleted. Um, if you're dealing with really, really super, super small geometry, uh, something like that where maybe an edit to an edge or something forced the recalc of what that face is supposed to look like and it didn't show up because you're too small, less than 0.0001 inches, I don't know, really tiny, that can happen. Um, but for the most part, if a big face like that's missing, it's because you probably accidentally deleted it. All right, every once in a while, something like this will happen. I'm gonna go ahead and get in context and take a look at this one. So this is weird because look, it looks like most of my blades there, but there's a chunk missing. What's up with that? All right, so if you ever see a situation like this where you have a piece missing, it's usually an indicator there's something going on with hidden geometry. So you can go to view, click hidden geometry, and you can see right here, okay, I have some dashed lines. So for whatever reason, some geometry I created cut this fan blade face and this piece was removed. Simple solution here, of course, is to, again, I'm just gonna go grab a line, I'm gonna draw a line here to force it. And then while I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab erase and get rid of these edges. Those aren't necessary. This is a fat, flat face. So there's no reason for hidden geometry to even be in there. That's just extra. And when you have little hidden geometry like that, then like I said, that's an, an opportunity to lose a face there, to lose face. Huh. All right, so that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and view, turn hidden geometry back off and we're gonna come out of here. All right, so that's pretty simple. There's some more examples on this fan. This is one that I see a lot, especially this happens a lot on very small geometry. Uh, remember SketchUp was created and intended for use in architectural modeling. It was kind of built up from that. So there's some assumptions made in the original uh, way that SketchUp worked that you'd be working with units of a certain size or larger. So like I said, I think it's point zero 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 one inches maybe five zeros four five zeros point four five zeros one inches so teeny teeny tiny if you try to create geometry smaller than that sketchup sometimes doesn't create it uh, so things like this can happen like merging geometry importing geometry uh, real fine meshes where there's real small geometry this of course didn't happen this was forced for example's sake um, but I'm gonna go ahead and come into context here. I picked this, this is all one big surface, but it's got holes missing, or it's got a hole in it. Um, so to fix this up, uh, there's a couple ways I could go about it, but let's talk about the simplest. Again, I'm gonna go to view, hidden geometry, and see something happened where this got deleted. Again, if you're dealing with real small geometry, that could be an issue where something was adjusted and it was too small for SketchUp to generate. Regardless, 
this is a pretty quick fix because I can, and now I, I admit something. I have to admit that I am a fan of hand stitching geometry, coming in and clicking between points. Connect, oh, it's relaxing, it's satisfying, it's soothing for me. But uh, this kind of fix, three clicks. You could try to use uh, an extension, like an, a lofting extension to select the edges and generate a face and then explode that face so it merges with geometry. But the amount of clicks it would take to loft something this small, drawing three lines is way simpler. So when it come, when the geometry comes back in, you'll see it like this. I'm gonna go ahead and go to view, turn my hidden geometry back off, and I'll see this. So where I drew my lines, it's unsoftened, and for some reason, this one right here reversed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with erase, and I'm gonna turn on soft and smooth modifier, and I'm just gonna hit all three lines. I did intentionally, it's all three. So you look and see what's happening here. Oh no, I got these weird breaks right here. Well. What happened, unfortunately, is if we take a peek inside here, look at this. I got, see these faces that got created? As I was cutting through there, as I drew that line, I created a face on the inside. So in this particular case, what I'd wanna do is select and delete that interior face and that interior face and that interior face till we're back to one big cavernous shape on the inside. Fixing this is of course as simple as right clicking anywhere on the surface, on the white portion of the surf of the face, no surface, I was right before. Click, right click on the white portion of the surface and just hit orient faces, it'll flip that back. So when you are hand stitching, you have to be conscious of what geometry you are closing. And the issue there was of course, if you look at my hidden geometry, as I drew this line right here, I was actually completing this circle that takes all that goes all the way around with hidden geometry and thus the face was created. So something to be conscious of if you do end up doing some hand stitching like that. All right, one more example, that's right down here. This is more likely, you'll see things like this when you try to draw real tiny circles or spheres, you do a follow me, you'll get geometry missing like this, uh, it happens. Fixing it again, uh, I can come in here, go to my hidden geometry, and it really is as simple as connecting the geometry back up. Remember what happened last time where we drew a line and it created that extra circle on the inside? We can get away from some of that. So down here, I'm gonna come and I'm just gonna draw this line right, oh, look, I'm out of context. Double click, am I in? Nope, double click. All right, now I'm in, in context. All right, so I'm gonna draw a line from here to here. That closed both those faces, that's good. Now, <clears throat> as I work my way up, if I draw a line from here to here, it'll probably put this face in, but it will create another circle on top of this. So if I have the option, if I draw the direction that doesn't create a face, it's gonna be easier because I have less cleanup to do. Same thing up here. Well, this one's more obvious because I gotta connect those two pieces up like that. Once that's done, of course, I can go to view, turn off my hidden geometry, grab my eraser, modifier key to smooth, and there we go. Um, again, this was these were fairly simple. There were small pieces missing. If I had something big, like a big chunk missing out where I couldn't just quickly connect it back together, there are a couple things I could do. So let's go look at this. Let's, let's, uh, let's make a mess. I'm gonna go to view, hidden geometry, and I'm gonna say something like this is missing, just, just a ton. So I could come in and try to draw lines parallel and try to like manually redraw that mesh, but that's rough, man. That's, that's tough to, to go in and, and create all that. So one thing you could do, I say could and I emphasize it, if it was written, it would be in italics because I'm putting a lot of emphasis on it. You could come in here, select around the edge like this, and then try to use a lofting extension, something like uh, maybe curve aloft or something like that. They'll go in and create a new surface. That could work. The issue in this particular case is I have this real nice ordered mesh. See how this goes the same all the way around? Um, curve aloft's not necessarily going to honor that. I may end up with this section being very different. If I'm looking at a huge different, you know, an example of like just a big messy mesh where there's a chunk missing, that might work. In something like this where I have a very ordered mesh, I might be, it might be quicker for me to do something like this. If I grab 
a stretch of geometry like this. I'm going to go ahead and make a group real quick. And now I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to rotate it from, can I get the center of this circle? Yes, I can. I'm going to say, move it from here, option, to here. And then I'm going to move it again from that. I'm using the middle point of this, this round component, option, to here. I'm going to say 2x. All right, there we go. So now I have overlapping geometry. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup. I'm going to grab all these, right click, explode them. And there we go. I fixed that mesh. This works because I have this nice, like I said, ordered radial mesh that goes around a single point, easy to copy over and fix like that. If it was an unordered mesh, if it was something that's real big and messy and crazy, landscape, something like that, then you may be better off using extension to loft that. But that is a couple of ideas on how to repair broken mesh. So like I said, that was lifted directly from our forum. Somebody asked, how do I go in and fix mesh? And of course, my instant thought was, you get to go stitch it. You get to click, 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 click. Oh, it's like sewing. It's so relaxing. But a lot of people don't like that the way that I do. And that's cool. Um, it really depends on where the mesh is broken, how it's broken. Because like I said, there's a couple things there where maybe a little bit stitching is easier. Maybe you can copy existing mesh. And then like I said, last, last resort, you may have to lean into something like curve aloft to loft uh, a face across there. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos around here each and every week. You can be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, do leave us a comment down below. Like I said, this video right here was created because of a comment from a viewer like you. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.